Hi, uh, this is Jason, and this is my daily vlog called Living with CMT. I hope you enjoy. Evening, folks. It's Wednesday evening. It's half past seven. Um, I didn't do a lot last night. I ended up watching a bit of football, FA Cup replay, and then I ended up going upstairs, and I just literally played on my tablet for a bit until I listened to some music and then went to sleep. Uh, we were going to go town today. Um, we're now going town tomorrow. I'm sorry I keep doing that, by the way. It's just making me itch. I'm not used to having a beard and moustache. Um, yeah, we got up and it was really cold. And the problem I've had today is I haven't been able to get warm. I've had the eating on uh, quite a lot. I've had hot water bottles. And I don't know whether it's because of me CMT. I don't know whether it's because of me hypothyroidism. I don't know whether it's because of me age, because I am 46, remember. Um, but something, I just cannot get warm. I don't know why. I don't know if any of you have the same sort of problem, actually. Um, maybe you have the same sort of thing. You can't keep warm. I'm, I'm, you know, I get warm for like five or ten minutes, but then all of a sudden I go freezing again. You know, I mean, I just can't seem to warm up. Even when I'm in bed, my hands are freezing. I don't know why. And I'd also get this weird thing where my left hand I don't use and that stays warm. My right hand I do use on the mouse and that goes freezing cold so that I can hardly feel my fingers. Now, I would have thought it would have been the other way around, that because I'm not using this and it's lying dormant, it wouldn't be used, so that would, like, go cold. Whereas this one, because I'm warm and I'm keeping the blood flowing, you would think that would stay warm, wouldn't you? But, no. Typical of me, everything sort of back to front and works weird. Well, it's day 21. Have I got it right? Yes, yeah, so I just had to check then, so I don't look an idiot. Day 21 of November. Um... I'm doing okay. I'm not doing too bad. I haven't turned anything for a, heard anything for a little bit. Uh, I've got about 140, I think. 140, 145 pounds. So I've still got another nine days and some more days of collecting after that. Like I said, we would do go downtown and we didn't. Um, too cold, mate. Way too cold. So I've been sorting stuff out on my computer. Um, going through old photographs and old poetry and uh, readings and stuff. And... Um, I noticed I've got a couple, uh, quite well, about three or four actually, Christmas bonds, which I'm not going to read out yet, so don't panic. But I will be doing. I'll be reading them out in the next four weeks, probably one a week, up until Christmas. They're about Christmas memories and Christmas things. Now, the one thing I won't do at the moment is put anything Christmassy behind me. Because even though people, I know some people who've had the tree up since the 9th of November, I aren't one of them. Because I don't want to put my Christmas tree up and all my decks up now. Because by Christmas, I'll be fed up on them. I will. I'll be absolutely sick of seeing Christmas stuff. It's like Christmas songs. If we start playing Christmas songs now, by the time Christmas Day comes, I'll be sick of hearing them and I won't want to hear them anymore. So what we tend to do, next week, the last week in November, we'll put the tree up. Now, the only reason we put it up then, is two reasons. One, in memory of my Auntie Pauline, who basically was... A woman who only came alive at Christmas. She literally lived for Christmas. Um, we used to go down there, because I live in Blackpool now, but we used to go down to Stoke-on-Trent, Newcastle under Lyme, Clayton, where she lived. And me and my wife, we would go down there and we would put her decorations up. And I mean, literally, we would go down there and get there about 10 or past in the morning. And then we would have a taxi back to my mum's at five, six o'clock at night, because we'd just finished putting them up by then. And one time we went down, we were actually there friday and went back on the saturday to finish off because she had that many but god i miss her so much and uh, christmas like i say is what she lived for and she literally her, her room her living room was so good that kids used to come past and the parents would knock on the door and the children would come in just to see all the decorations all the things lit up she had about nine or ten things in the window she had things going across the ceiling. She had the big tree in the corner. She had things on the mantel and on the shelf and on the hearth and everything glowing and playing Christmas music. And what my job was, because obviously I couldn't um, put, I didn't put up the tree or nothing. That was a daughter who used to put that up. But what we used to do, we used to do all, I used to do all the electrics because she literally had nine or 10 things in a window and I had to make sure that. Because she had arthritis and other problems, I wanted to make sure she didn't have to bend down much. So I would always make sure that I managed to get them all off one big, long adapter and made it so one switch turned everything on, one switch turned everything off. And uh, I used to do it. You know, I used to get it done. And uh, this was when I was a lot more physically able than I am now. 
I used to be able to climb up ladders and, and, and stuff like that. Um, now, no, I wouldn't be able to do it now. Um, I'd still have tried, don't get me wrong, if she was there and she wanted me to go down there, we'd still go down. It's just I'd probably end up sitting down more than them, you know, Christmas, eh? I noticed something yesterday which made me laugh and cringe and cry and worry about the state of the world. Uh, Marks and Spencers have got a campaign at the moment, and their campaign for Christmas is called Must Haves. Basically, must have food, must have drink, must have um, outfits, etc. And one of the things they put was must have sexy lingerie. Now, the feminists have come forward and said that this is sexist and it made them feel physically sick. Well, I'm sorry, but get a life, you sad people. M&S are not saying that you must have sexy underwear. They are not saying that. It is part of a massive campaign. And I'm behind M&S 100% on this because I've seen it in Windows. They are basically suggesting things, you know, like, you know, if you see um, a TV that you think is fantastic and you say to your mate, oh, it's a must have. Oh, it's a great. Oh, you want to see it. It's fantastic. You're not telling him he has got to buy that right there and then because he must have it. It's, it's an expression. We've always used that expression, a must have. You know, it doesn't mean everybody has to go out and buy it. It's just an expression. But these people have got right on the boat. And I don't blame m have issued a statement today saying they're not backing down. And I don't blame them. If they want me to sign a petition, I'll sign it a thousand times. Feminists sometimes are taking things way too far. And this is one of them occasions. This is just an advertising campaign. You know, and I wouldn't mind. But next to where they've got this photograph where it says must have underwear. And bear in mind, there's a dash between the must have right because it's just an expression they've also got must have um clothing the outfits must have christmas outfits but nobody's complaining saying well hang on a minute i don't want to buy that outfit so why have i got to buy that outfit it's only the feminists that are coming forward and having a paddy on these this this lingerie stuff which it drives me nuts it really does drive me nuts i cannot see the point of why you would moan about an advertising campaign unless it was obvious that it was sexist, that it was obvious that it was racist, obvious that it was di against disabled people or whatever. This is not. This is a bog standard advertising campaign, and I think it's a good campaign. It's called the must have campaign. And if you check it out, you tell me if you think it's sexist or, you know, making belittling women or whatever. It isn't. It isn't. It's just complete cobblers. Um, yeah, if you noticed last night's video, it uh, seemed to be further away. The camera did. Um, I had a bit of problems last night with my webcam on my computer. For some reason, every time I plugged it in and started speaking, the sound, would, my voice would literally appear on the screen about four seconds after I'd finished speaking. So I looked like I was doing some sort of like Japanese Kung Fu movie from the 70s. I was kind of going, and then the voice was coming out, how are you today? You know, it's like. I couldn't figure out what was wrong, so I just used my camera that was built into my laptop. And even though it wasn't very good, it's not a very good picture, it never has been, but it still did the trick for last night. Right, we, we are going town tomorrow. We are definitely going town tomorrow. Um, we've got stuff to do. We've got things to buy. And as I explained, I'll, I'll continue where I was, sorry. I've lost myself on a tangent. Right, the reason we put the tree up at the end of the, the, the end of November, I said one reason was my aunt Pauline. The second week is my wife uh, does all her own cooking, baking. She does her own cards. She makes her own cards. She sorts out all Christmas stuff herself. She does it all, right? We hardly buy anything in that respect. We don't buy cards unless they're just like little simple cards. Now, because of that, the first three weeks of Christmas, obviously up to about the 21st, are busy, really, really busy. Now, if you've got to filter in to that, the fact that you've got to do Christmas decorations as well, you're not going to have time. So what we do, we allocate the last week in November for the decks and everything that's got to be done in the house. And then Deb settles down to do her cards and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, that's that's her busy, her busy time is coming up. She's actually in the process of doing a couple of cards at the moment on commission for family members because they think her cards are wonderful. They really do. And um, we've got a couple of people now who do cards. There's, uh, we, we first found out uh, for doing cards was um, Saran's Bespoke Emporium, who I mentioned the other day, which you can find on Facebook. Now, that's uh, friends of ours. And through them, Deb got making cards and now she makes her own cards. And um, I will show you a couple of them in a moment. Now, a couple of years ago, it was my wife's 40th birthday and 
Our Saran's Bespoke, the one I'm on about, actually made this so you can see it. Can you see that? Can you see the detail in that? Can you see how beautiful it is? That was one of the items that's made of MDF, that is. That was one of the items that was made by Saran's Bespoke Emporium. And this is the kind of stuff they make, and they make them to all sorts of orders, right? That's one. That's one. All right. This was the card that was made this year for my wife, uh, off me. I actually paid them to make the cards for me. I don't know if you can see that. That's absolutely stunning, that is. Now, the picture in it was hand-coloured as well. The picture in it was hand-coloured, and that was by Sarah of Saran's Bespoke. Um, another one which I had made. And it was for, uh, let me just think, what was it for, this one? It was our anniversary. Can you see that? Got keys at the bottom. All this lot's like proper, you know, they're not stickers or nothing like that. These are actually proper MDF things and, and all sorts of stuff. Now, my wife, she also makes cards. Now, this is one of hers. You'll like this. See this? See, I am mental on that guy there. See, Taz, right? Now, this is one of my wife's cards. Watch. When you open it, and you can see that, it actually opens out. It's called an exploding box card. And you basically, you've all got layers and flaps and, and happy birthdays and, and stuff. And what it basically does, it folds into a box like that. Folds into a box and the lid... Yep, and I can do it. Tell me dexterity's gone, can't you? The lid goes on it, and you get a lovely little square box like that. Look at that. All right, that's one. I know I'm singing the praises here. She'll kill me. This is another one she did for me. Look at that. To the one I love. Yes, it is to me. Uh, yeah, Deb made that for me as well. And this one, she made for me last year for Christmas. I don't know whether you can see that. This is a thing called a waterfall card. And if you get hold of this here and pull, see how it opens up? Whoops, I've got it stuck. <laughs> That's my fault. There you go. Can you see how it opens up? See that? Look. Little pictures on it. It's called a waterfall card. And Deb actually makes them as well. But yeah, th this is the kind of thing you see that, that they do. <laughs> so... If it's not Deb, it's Saran's Bespoke Emporium on Facebook. They do the MDF projects and the cards to order. Yeah, so as you can see from them previous shots, there's a lot of uh, skill and a lot of talent goes into it. I know there's quite a few people out there who make cards. I'm not saying they're the only ones. I'm just saying they're the ones that I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I say, you want to check them out. You, you could do a lot worse than having some very, very unique stuff made. If you go on to uh, Facebook, and just type in Sarans, S-A-R-A-N-S, Bespoke, B-E-S-P-O-K-E, -E, Emporium. And if you search for it, it's on there. And they're, they're lovely, you know, it's mother and daughter partnership and they are brilliant. They are fantastic at what they do. Highly recommended. Well, I think that's my video done for today, actually. I've done quite a bit today. Um, I notice I've got a couple more subscribers as well. Like I say, I've got 32 now. I'm having comments off different people. I'm um, having new people uh, checking out my stuff because at the end of the day, that, that's what it's there for. Just so people can relax, chill. You know, I don't talk about anything massively intellectual, but I enjoy what I do. So thank you again. And uh, I'll do another video tomorrow. Bye for now. If you're enjoying the videos I'm doing and you want to see more, uh, you can subscribe by clicking the link there. And if you want to see my exciting day from yesterday, you can click up there. Thank you again for taking the time to watch my videos. Bye for now.